Okay, this YouTube video is about Carbide Creed Pro training, uh, training video part one. And again, uh, we're talking about an introduction and some information, some general information on how Carbide Create Pro uh, is set up. Uh, so we've got job setup, model planning. Uh, we're gonna talk about the design tab, the workspace usage, and the modeling tab. Today, I'm gonna start on a training program for Carbide Create Pro. I'm going to build it in parts, so I'm going to try and keep them all in lower in length, and that way you can jump in and, and see which pieces you might want to review and you don't have to get stuck in some of the things you might be already familiar with. So this, to start out with, this is going to be an introduction and some general information on Carbide Create Pro. Uh, Carbide Create Pro is a 3D modeling program. It's an add-on to Carbide Create. Carbide Create is a 2.5D program which means you have two dimensions and then you can control your depth in the, uh, in the Z axis for the half D there. Uh, Carbide Create Pro will give you contour between those different depths. So it allows you to do a few more things that you normally wouldn't be able to do. Uh, up here in the uh, left corner shows the, the rev number that I'm using, which is build seven, two, six. Um, so that's uh, a new build for Carbide Create. They've got some new features in there that are, are very capable. I'm not going to go into all the new features for Carbide Create. Uh, my assumption here is that people have bought, and bought Carbide Create Pro and they're already familiar with Carbide Create. So I'm going to, I may come back later and add a few special videos on things that I'm interested in in Carbide Create. But for now, we're just going to try and finish, finish out a training program for Carbide Create Pro. And so uh, we'll go from there. Um, if you uh, if you bring your mouse over, uh, like in most programs, and you hover over an icon, it'll and you stop for a second, it'll pop up like it's doing on the left over here, and it'll tell you hey, that's create a circle. Um, you know, this is a library. Um, you know, so it'll tell you a little bit about the the feature that you're hovering over uh, for. Um, Carbide Create Pro and Carbide Create, there's a, um, a library, this, this edition, to add a bunch of source vector graphics that you may want to use to build things that can get you started on your projects. Uh, and you can add these two things that you want to draw. So that's an interesting add. Um, so coming across the top here, everything here is pretty much the same as in Carbide Create. Uh, the next line is that we've got a design bar that's pretty much the same uh, the modeling feature is totally new and the the toolpath has a couple of new features in there for uh, carbon create pro a rough toolpath and a finishing toolpath um, when you when you uh, start out you're going to start out with um, uh, setup as usual um, this defines how big your material is in carbide create uh, normally, you would set this the size of your wood. In this case, I'm doing 18 inches by 18 inches. Uh, it's the inch scale. I have the thickness of the material is 0.75. Normally, for Carbide Create, I'd start off in the lower right corner. Uh, but in this case, for Carbide Create Pro, I'm going to start off in the middle. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. So that's all set up right. So when you start out in Carbide Create, you draw, you draw something. And in this case, uh, we were drawing uh, a butterfly. And you can see how I've had lots of stuff here where I've, I use an overflow space. Um, but uh, whatever, whatever you have here that you've designed in Carbide Create will flow over to the modeling area where you can start modeling. And these are all the components of the model. So there is, a, there is some issues here. Um, once you um, set the size of your material, uh, and in the uh, modeling area, I like to call it more of a workspace. But once you start building your model, I can't move this anywhere. So below this is a grayscale image that I can't move. Now, there are some tricks to kind of move it a little bit, um, but those are a little more advanced right now. Now I'm going to use my next favorite up here is edit and undo. Now that puts it back on top. So when you build your... Um, your space, um, your material space, think about your modeling space as more of a work area because you can't, you can't move it 
And if you build something off of the edge, it won't work. So if you run out of space over here and you have to go off the edge, you have to start completely over if you want to move it. Um, like I said, we'll talk later about maybe how to move this if you export it and bring it back in. But that has some problems as well. So Carbide Create Pro is um, all about the best use of the thickness of your material. So if we come, come look at the, uh, the butterfly that we've got here, uh, this is the butterfly I drew. And we're going to go to the modeling area and we're going to look at it in, uh, in 3D. So, so here it is, and I'm going to flip it up so you can see the edges a little bit. And so when you, when, you, uh, when you decide to build something, you need to kind of maybe print out a picture of it. And you can say, well, you know, my material I have to build first. That's three quarters of an inch thick. So you build your first component over here uh, with that height in mind. And then you say, okay, I want to subtract this area here that's kind of a rounded area out of it. So that's your dish. That's a three millimeter down and that's it. I'm doing this in millimeters and then you come back in and you you add these other spaces up and down so this is a subtract for these these dots and another add for the wings and the bodies added a little higher um, and so uh, you can't go above the, the height of the material and if you do it'll it'll show up as red and so you want to plan ahead and decide you know how you want to how you want to make each of these pieces uh, and kind of make them in layers, and and then just you know it, it'll save a little bit of confusion. Uh, but if you if you make a mistake, uh, you can either you can you can come over and you can disable it so that it's out of the out of the view. And so that took out uh, the little eyes that I had on here. Then you can build another set of eyes, and you decide which one you like, and then either delete the one you don't like, or you can just leave it disabled. But I'm going to enable it back, and we'll go look. And see here my eyes my eyes two eyes are back in there so you can do this however you want and we're going to go into um, how to build all this and how to add and remove stuff uh, and but uh, first i want to go and talk one more thing uh, when you build a component and you close it out y you can't change it <clears throat> so it's very very good to go ahead and 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 uh, label the component like this is the dish here on the top and it tells me that it's three millimeters deep. There's some stuff when you build it, some parameters, and you've put those in your definition here of it so you can find out what you want to look at. Because if you have to go back and change it, you only have a couple of things you can do. You can change the name, you can change the merge type, which means add, subtract uh, material, uh, but you can't change any of the other features about it. Uh, you can change a little bit of the base height, um, but, but that's about it. So you want to get used to, uh, to uh, planning ahead and, uh, and uh, building it how you want to do it. So that's all I have for, for this video. I'm going to go into the next video and we're going to talk about how to uh, start building some uh, and doing some modeling. Alrighty, this is um, lists some additional resources for you to look through. I hope you uh, found something useful in here and we'll uh, subscribe and like for the next uh, part of this video coming up. Thank you for your time.